This morning we're going to look at a point in seeing between Jesus and his disciples. We commonly refer to it, uh, the meal that they share is the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, but we have a little little element to that to that scene that's only given to us in the Gospel of John. And so in John chapter 13, we're going to look at the first eight verses. And just as a little sidebar, the, the Gospel of John is, is unique unto itself. In fact, 90% of what we find in the Gospel of John is not found in the other three Gospels. So it has always been a very unique piece of the New Testament literature. And this happens to be one of those passages that is a part of that 90% of John's Gospel that is only found in John's Gospel. It was just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Jesus, Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So got up from the meal, took off his outer garment, wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing. But later, you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part of me. This is one of those passages which is true about so many passages, especially in the Gospels where there are just multiple layers of meaning through all of what Jesus is saying and through the actions that Jesus is taking. But this morning, the, the one thing that I want us to focus on is the servanthood of Jesus. This washing of the disciples' feet here in John chapter, chapter 13. Because I want what he does here to speak to us about our own understanding of what, of what real servanthood is about. And so to just kind of give a broader context and hopefully a deeper appreciation for what we're going to be looking at here in this particular passage, just a, just a minute or two about foot washing uh, in the first century. The typical custom was that when you would arrive at a dinner, when you would arrive at a event that you had been invited to in someone's home, uh, as soon as you came to the threshold of the front door, you would have been met by a servant of the household who would have removed your sandals, would have washed your feet, and then once that had taken place, then you were free to kind of then enter and go on into the home for the meal or whatever activity might, might be occurring there. The servant that would meet you at the door to perform this foot washing was always the lowest servant amongst the household servants. Uh, so you would not uh, have been met by uh, a high-level servant, but you would have been met by the lowest servant within that particular individual's uh, household. I do not want you to have the impression that the washing of feet, the removing of sandals, and all of that was just kind of a, a custom of nicety. It was a necessity. And I want you to kind of picture this, that if you and I have folks over for a dinner, Right? Everybody comes in, and for the dinner, they're going to sit at a table in a chair, and, you know, the feet, right? You're in kind of a seated position. The feet are like, hey, 
example, now in the first century, as is the case here, at this meal that Jesus and his disciples were at, you did not sit at a table by pulling up a chair. You would recline at a table that would have been about knee high. And so you literally kind of would have laid on the floor, maybe propping yourself up with a few pillows kind of on your elbow in a very kind of relaxed position. Now, I want you to visualize that. Where then are the feet? The feet are not that far removed in distance from the table where all the food is at. The feet, to even make this more personal, the feet are not too removed from the next person's head. Right? If you're all laying in one direction and you're here, somebody's feet are right there. Now, if you have walked through muddy, manured streets of Jerusalem, washing up feet was not a nicety, it was a necessity. If any of you have ever taken a long airline flight, and particularly if you've ever gone overseas or you've taken one of those night flights where you leave late at night and you, you know you arrive at your destination, you know, at the dawn of the of the next day. If you've ever been on one of those flights, you know that that 45 minutes before you land, the steward or the stewardess come and start working their way down the aisles with a little little pan of, of warm washcloths, warm wet washcloths. And with a pair of tongs, they start handing them to all the, the passengers on the plane. And, and on the occasions when I've been on one of those flights, you know, you get that warm wet washcloth, and you know what? I'm not dirty. I've just been sitting on, a, on an airplane. But you just start rubbing that thing all over your face, the back of your neck, and you know, your hands, and you just start feeling it. That's a nice thing. So I don't want you to think this morning that foot washing is a nicety in the first century. It's a necessity because that's going to give a little bit more impact if we appreciate that to, to what is happening here and probably a, a better understanding of why the lowest servant of the house would do that fairly, kind of, just to be blunt, kind of nasty tax. And so Jesus does it here in John chapter 13. And so he is demonstrating in his action, this is a parable not told, but a parable that is lived by Jesus before his disciples and speaks to them about servanthood, speaks to them about service. And there are three things this morning that I want to draw your attention to as we think about the servanthood that Jesus demonstrates here. First off is we notice the context that is given to us by the writer in the opening sentence of John 13. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave the world and go to the Father. In other words, this is a busy time in Jerusalem. It's a high, holy season in Jerusalem. Now you layer that with the fact that the Gospel writer tells us that Jesus is keenly aware of what awaits him. You know, sometimes I'll read that, that someone has written about Jesus that, that the cross event, that his death, was just kind of something that spiraled out of control. It was not. It was purposed. It was planned. It was destined. It was set in place. That this what happened to Jesus in John 13, 1 reminds us of that, that Jesus knew what was going to happen. Jesus knew what was going to await him. Now, with all of that context, we can only begin to imagine then that if Jesus knows that his earthly existence is about to come to an end in a matter of days, think about certainly with him being both fully human as well as divine, the emotional pain that he would have been in, the things that might be running through his mind about what he needed to say, what he needed to do, where he needed to be, all of that kind of agenda, being within him, knowing what awaited him. 
And so if there was ever an inconvenient time for Jesus to do a menial, seemingly menial act of service, it was that moment and that time and that night. We are reminded in this that you and I serve even when it's inconvenient. Even when there's so much that might be on an agenda that would draw us away and move us to expend our time and our energies and our attention in other things, that doing a menial act of service would be an inconvenience. We still serve. You know, sometimes we say, well, you know, I'll serve, I'll volunteer, I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll do for the church or for the Lord, you know, when I have a little bit more money, when I have more free time. When I have more free time. When I get out of school. When the kids leave home and I'm an empty nester. When I retire or when my spouse retires. You know, we have all of that litany of things that we say, well, I'll have time or I can volunteer or I can serve when, and then we fill in a blank that bends <coughs> our convenience. The bottom line is that if the only time you and I are ever going to get serious about service is when it is convenient for us, we will never be a servant. Because Jesus demonstrates here, and we are reminded in multiple places in the witness of Scripture that we serve even when it's inconvenient, mm -hmm. even when it doesn't fit our schedule, even when it doesn't kind of connect with our calendar, even when we've got other things on our agenda. Second thing that is here is the presence of Judas, is the presence of Judas. Judas, according to the, to the gospel writer, has been tempted by Satan, prompted to betray Jesus. Jesus knows this. Jesus knows this. But Jesus, even knowing this, still washes Judas' feet. And to me, that's pretty powerful. And Jesus is keenly aware of what Judas is going to do in these days ahead to betray him. And this tells me that we serve even when it's not congratulated, appreciated, or reciprocated. Jesus knows that what he's doing here with Judas will not be appreciated or reciprocated by Judas back to him. And you know, so many times you and I are tempted to serve if we're going to be thanked. To serve if we think it's going to be appreciated. To serve if we think it's going to be paid back. To serve if we think we're going to be recognized. To serve if we think we're going to be congratulated. To serve if we think we're going to be somehow rewarded. I know in, in my life I've heard people say, and sometimes I've had this own attitude as well. Well, there's no need to go back there. You know, they just don't appreciate anything I did. Well, that's not why we serve. Well, I'm not going to do that. You know, I never heard a thank you at all from that. Mm -hmm. That's not why we serve. Because if that was why we served when Jesus got to Judas, he'd have skipped the guy. Mm -hmm. Or Jesus would have said to Judas, you know what, now would be the appropriate time for you to leave the room. Mm -hmm. But Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus serves a guy who isn't not only going to appreciate it or recognize it or reciprocate it, but who is an enemy to what Jesus is doing. 
and who he is about. And so we serve even when we're not going to be congratulated. Third thing, we serve even when it's not compatible with our status. Now, I think this comes into play here with Peter. You know, Jesus is working his way around the room, right? He's washing the disciples' feet, and ultimately he works himself around to where, where Peter is at. And Peter basically says, you're not washing my feet. And, you know, Jesus says, no, you know, I need to wash your feet. And, of course, again, there's much that's happening. There's much that, that, that's going on here. There's much that's in play in, in this particular scene. But Peter is working out of a psychology that basically says to Jesus, Jesus, it's beneath you to wash my feet. In other words, service ought to equate with status. And so in Peter's mind, there were just some things that people of certain stature, stature or status just didn't do. It was beneath them. And here's a great question I think we could ask of John 13. These disciples arrive either in pairs or singly or whatever. They come to the threshold of the door. There's no servant there because Jesus didn't have household servants. There's no servant there to take their sandals off, to wash their feet. So I've got two questions. Number one is, why didn't one of the disciples say, you know what, I'll take care of this? I mean, they've been with Jesus for three years. They had heard his preaching. They had heard his teaching. They had seen his humility. All of this had been modeled for them. But according to what we have in John 13, not one single disciple said, you know what, if you, you know, there's nobody around here. Jesus doesn't have any service. So I'll just wait at the door and I'll take care of my brothers as they come in and take care of him. That's one question we could ask. The second question we could ask is, why didn't they clean their own feet? Could have done that. The basin and the towel were there already in the room, according to John 13. Why didn't they just wash their own feet? Right? This isn't a nicety, this is a necessity. You know why they didn't do either one of those, serve one another, or just serve themselves? Because they thought foot washing was beneath them. And so they just reclined at the table with smelly feet and everything. Rather than stoop to do something that they thought was undignified and beneath who they were. You know, sometimes we can be like that, can we not? We think, well, you know, that's just that's a little bit beneath my, my status, my title. Reminded of the joke about the priest who was driving through a small town, and he was speeding. And uh, had the last name of Fox, and so the, the little county deputy pulled him over on the outskirts of town, and so got him off on the shoulder of the road, walked up to the window and looked at him and, and he said, do you know why I pulled you over? And the priest said, well, yeah, I was going, to, I was going a little too fast. And he said, I really apologize. And, and the county deputy said, well, I appreciate that, but I am going to have to give you a ticket. And so the priest looked up at the, at the county deputy and he, and he says, but do you know who I am? I'm Father Fox. And the county deputy looked back at him and said, I don't care if you mother goose, you're still going to get it. I knew that I have a nephew, Jack. Jack, in the summertime, helps his dad out a little bit. He typically uh, has other full-time jobs, but, but he'll help his dad out a little bit on the weekends. And his dad uh, works on houses, will flip houses on occasion. And so there's always some house project somewhere going on. And, uh, uh, and so anyway, so story came back a, a couple summers ago that one Saturday he was uh, working for his dad and, and his dad handed him a broom and told Jack to sweep out this old, you know, wood frame garage. And Jack looked at his dad this is just good father-son stuff. 
John, Jack looked at his, at his dad and said, I don't sweep. <laughs> now, I just want you to know that when that got back to his uncle and his cousins, we have made tremendous mileage <laughs> out of that. And so we'll say, Jack, could you help us? Oh, that's right, Jack doesn't lift. <laughs> Jack, could you come pick up? Oh, that's right, Jack doesn't drive. You see what I'm saying? But how many of us take the attitude, I don't sweep? Because we think there are some elements, some things with service and servanthood that aren't compatible with our status. To kind of give this even a firmer first century context, the interesting thing was that in the first century, if you were a rabbi, you always had students around you that you were teaching and training uh, for rabbinical service. And you know, Jesus' disciples early on often called him rabbi because that was kind of a role that, that he performed. He, he would gather them around him as a rabbi of the first century would do and teach them and instruct them. And, and so they would refer to him as that, as teachers, rabbi. In the first century, the student would always wash the feet and remove the sandals of the rabbi. Never would that work in reverse. Never. <clears throat> but here Jesus flips that custom on its head. The teacher serves the student. The greatest serves the least. You see, Jesus sweeps. Amen. He got their dirt on his hands. And so this morning, as we think about servanthood, as we think about service, just this vignette in John chapter 13. May we be reminded that servanthood is not about when it's convenient. Servanthood is not about being congratulated and recognized. Servanthood is not about it has to be compatible with my standing, my status, my education, my, my skill set. It's about getting dirty hands in the name of and in recognition of the love of Jesus Christ to those around us. Just as Jesus did on this night in John 13. Let's pray. Father God, we were humble this morning in recognizing how Jesus washed feet of those disciples. And in this just meaningful, meaningful scene where so much is going on that we can look and see there the servant heart, the servant nature, the servant leadership of our Lord Jesus Christ. So may it speak to us today about what it means to serve. The attitude involved. The humbleness of spirit. The dirtying of our hands. So that we truly might be instruments of your love and your compassion to one another and to those that are beyond the walls of this place. It is in the name of Jesus, one who put a towel around his waist, took a basin of water, and got iron dirt on his hands. We pray. Amen.